So let's take a look at the inverse transforms. So the, if I wanted to compute the transformation from B to A, I could get that from the transformation from A to B by taking the matrix inverse. So this is a true matrix inverse of, a, of this 4x4 four four matrix. So unlike the rotation matrices, we just can't take the transpose because these 4x4 four four homogeneous matrices, um, transformation matrices, are not orthonormal. Um, however, we can look at the form of that uh, inverse. Let's just take a look here. So let's say I want to get the transformation from B to A. I know that's composed of the rotation from B to A and the translation of B origin in A. So if I knew the other way, um, if I knew the rotation from A to B, I could simply take the transpose of that, right, to get the uh, rotation matrix that I want. However, the translation's a little trickier. So if you think about it, if this is frame A, and this is the origin of frame B, that's the um, vector, that's the location of the B origin in the A frame. But I want the other way. I want to get the um, location of the A frame in B. So I take the negative of the origin of A, origin, sorry, with respect to B, but I have to, I have to um, rotate that now into the um, into the A frame. Let me just move this a little bit. So it's going to give me. I'm going to rotate from B to A and take the negative of that vector of the A origin in the B frame. So this is a, if, if you don't want to do a full matrix inverse, for example, it's slow, you're, you're concerned about running time, you can construct the matrix, matrix inverse using this form right here. Okay, so we can think of a transformation then as a description of frame A relative to frame B or a transform that would map a point in the A frame to its representation in the B frame. And the nice thing about this notation is we can concatenate these together by simply multiplying these matrices. So let's say I wanted to go from A to B to C or, and on to D. I can simply multiply the transformation matrix from B to C times from A to B and I get from A to C. So the nice thing is that the, uh, these superscripts and subscripts cancel out. And I can do this as, for as many uh, chains as I want to have quite a, a lengthy chain like that. OK, a little bit um, on the order of rotations. So we've been using the convention called XYZ fixed angles. So what this says is we start with frame A I'm sorry, frame B coincident with frame A. Then we rotate frame B about the uh, unit vectors of frame A. So first about the x-axis of frame A, and then about the y-axis of frame A, and then about the z-axis of frame A. So the thing to remember here is that these rotations are taking place relative to the fixed axes of A. So, and we um, saw that the form of the rotation matrix was the product of these three individual matrices. So this is the convention we're going to be using. Um, and as I showed in that MATLAB example, the order does matter. You don't get the same rotation matrix if you multiply them in a different order. Um, just a aside here, we sometimes we will look at a simplification of the rotation matrix 
if the angle of rotations are small. So this could be, for example, if the object, if we're looking at a video sequence and the object is rotating slowly, or we might look at um, a uh, finite difference to, to compute, a, uh, to estimate a derivative. So if you take the rotation matrix, um, the full form of it, which looks like this in XYZ angles, and use the approximation that cosine of theta is about equal to one and sine of theta is about equal to theta for small theta. Then this first element will be one times one. This will be one times theta y times theta x. So theta y times theta x will be the product of two very small numbers, which will be approximately zero. And this will be approximately theta z times one. So anyway, you, you do all that, and this simplifies down to something that looks like this. So we'll use this occasionally a little bit later.